Hello, everybody. Welcome to Game 2 of the 1986 NLCS on Inside Pitch. The Astros took Game 1 in exciting fashion. Don't know if Game 2 will be quite as exciting, but we'll see. Pitching matchup for today's game, Nolan Ryan on the mound for the Astros. Bobby Ojeda, a lefty, is on the mound for the Mets. Yank, uh, the Met lineup has not changed. That stays the same. However, with the Mets using a lefty out of their bullpen, the Astros have used their two platoon players at third and short. So on the bench is Reynolds and Walling, the lefties, and in the lineup are Garner and Thon, the righties. So we are ready for game number two. Not say it's a must game for the Mets because they do get three at home after this, but you don't want to go back home if you can avoid it down two games to none. Uh, especially you fought so hard to come back in the game one and have it get away from you. But what are you going to do? All right. Well, Lenny Dykstra will lead things off to try to get the Mets kick-started here in game number two against Nolan Ryan. And game two underway. 5-5. Five, five, that's a potential walk. Dykstra 13. Stadium takes away one, so it drops in this 12 to 11, so there is no walk. Go to Dykstra. 6-4. It's a question mark. 8. It goes to a 10. That's an 8. It's a double for Lenny Dykstra. A leadoff double for Lenny Dykstra. And how about that? Matt's looking to come back in the worst way in even this series. That'll bring up Wally Backman strategy roll. Nothing happening. Ryan to Backman. 5-6. It's a home run question mark. Nine passes. But Backman's only a one for a home run. So no home run, but he will get the swing. 5-2 is going to fly to center. Now the question is, can Dykstra move to third? He does run at a four. You do lose two going from second to third on the fly to center. So that drops him to a two. And then Hatcher, the center fielder arm, is a plus one. So that brings him up to a three. So a one to three, he'll make it. It's a six. So now will he reverse track and go back, or will he get thrown out? Well, we'll look at the chart right here. And we're looking at the plus one arm of the outfielder. So here, a three through six, he will hold up. One to two, could be an out. So a three through six, Dykstra will backpedal. It's a one, though, so he will not backpedal. Let's take a look here. We're going to go to the... We're going to go to the... It says runner out. We don't have to go anywhere. It says runner out. We don't have to go anywhere. It says it right here, one to two, the runner is out. Fly second to third or S plus, the runner is out. So Dykstra is out trying. It's going to be a double play. Wow. Talk about taking the starch out of things. A double play just that quickly and two quick outs. What a throw by Billy Hatcher. Dykstra can't believe it. And that'll bring up Keith Hernandez with two outs and the base is clear. 6-1 to strikeout chance. Hernandez will take the K, and the inning is over. So just like that, what looked like a promise for the Mets turns into fool's gold. And at the end of half an inning to play, it's the Mets nothing, the Astros coming to bat. And somewhere out there, RJL is mumbling under his breath, rigged. But we shall see. we got eight and a half innings to go, potentially. Here's Billy Hatcher against Ojeda. Ojeda was 18 and 5 with a 257 ERA for the Mets. So good pitcher. 2 3 is a range play. We go to Billy Hatcher for a range play. 3 4, and that's a single to short, but it is a range check for Rafael Santana, who just happens to be a 5, the best you can get. So anything other than a 6, and Santana will take the hit away. And he does. So Santana takes the hit away from Hatcher. One down. Best laid plans for Hatcher, but Santana says not so fast. Here's Bill Doran. 
against Ojeda. 1-1 one, one to st super strikeout or strikeout plus, and he is gone. Two down for right-handed hitting Phil Garner. 4-6, possible error on a throw. 6-6 six, six is a single to right field, so no throw to worry about because nobody's on base. It's simply a single for Phil Garner. A two-out single. And now strategy roll. And nothing's happening. So here's Glenn Davis. 1-3 is a strikeout chance, and he will not get him. 10 is too high. 4-4 four, four, is a single to center field. Can Garner make it to third? That's the question. On a single to center, single to center, to go from first to third, you lose one on your run rating. So Garner drops from a three to a two, but there are two outs. That brings him back to a three. And then the center fielder arm, Backman, or sorry, uh, Dykstra, is a zero. So one to three, and he will make third base. It's a six, so we're back to this again. We're back to this again. He's a zero arm, so a four to six, he's going to hold one to three, one to three, we go to this third chart over here. It's a four, so that means he's going to hold. So Garner puts on the brakes. He was thinking about going to third, but even with two outs, he couldn't do it because Dykstra got on it so quickly. So two down, two on for Kevin Bass. Strategy roll. 16, nothing happening. 1-2 against a switch hitter Bass batting right-handed. That's a blank. Go to Kevin Bass. 6-3. It's a single to center field. Almost surely will score Garner. He's a 3. We already know Dykstra's a 0 arm. There are 2 outs. That makes him a 4. To score from 2nd on a single hit to center, you add 2. That means it's a 6. He will score without a throw. And now Glenn Davis is a 2. With 2 outs makes him a 3. To get from first to third on a single to center, you lose one. So that makes him a two. So one to two, he can make it to third base. He does. So Glenn Davis makes it to third base. On the single by Kevin Bass. And the Astros lead it one to nothing. So things not going the way of the Mets early. But that's the way the last game was. But as you saw last game, you got to play all nine innings. So here's Jose Cruz, three. He does. He could get the steal attempt, could Kevin Bass, but would you really want to? Well, they're going to try it. 13 plus the one there and a plus one from Carter's a 15. One to 15, they'll send him. And he's in there. Stolen base, Kevin Bass. So now a base hit from Cruz could score two runs. Ojeda has to bear down. Nothing on the havoc. Ojeda to Cruz, 3-1's a walk chance, 6 will walk him. He's a 7, Stadium takes away 1, makes it a 6, but that is a 6, so Bass went through all the trouble to steal the base, he would have got there on his own, as it turns out. And now the 7th man to bat in the inning, Alan Ashby. Ojeda in big time trouble. Gooden only went 4 innings in the first game, so you don't want to wear your bullpen out, although it is an off day for travel tomorrow, so I guess everybody's really available. Ojeda, 1-6 against a switch hitter batting right is a walk chance. That's an 18, though, so no walk. Ashby will swing. 1-4, that's a single pass third. So bat, uh, Davis will score. Davis will score. Let's check what happens with Kevin Bass. It's an S5, and to score from second, you have to have a 5 or better. Bass is a four, but with two outs, it becomes a five, so Bass will score as well. It is a two-run single. Two-run single for Alan Ashby, and the Astros lead it three to nothing here in the first. Wow, go figure. Three to nothing Astros in the top of the first, or bottom of the first, rather. Cruz on second. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Here's Dickie Thon. Ojeda, 1-4, blank to a righty. Go to Thon, 3-5, and that's a grounder back to Ojeda to finally end the inning. But not before the Astros put three runs on the board here in the bottom of the first. 
as they are looking to take a two games to none lead in this series before they have to go back to Shea Stadium. They would love to go back up two games to none. But we still got eight innings to go, so anything can happen. Nolan Ryan back out will face Gary Carter, Daryl Strawberry, and Mookie Wilson. Mets definitely capable of scoring some runs, so nothing's over, particularly an inside pitch. 1-3 is a walk plus, so Gary Carter will draw a leadoff walk. And that's how you come, that's how you get back in the game is get base runners on. Here's strategy roll. Nothing going on. Ryan, 2-2 two, two is the asterisk, which is an automatic out. And it's going to be a ground ball to first. So potential double play, but not likely. In fact, it's probably not going to happen at all. Strawberry is only a one. You lose one, or you don't gain anything, I should say, when it's hit to first with the infield end. Your first baseman doesn't gather anything. We go to the shortstop pivot, which is Dickie Thon. He's a zero. So this has to be a one for a double play. It's a three. It's not going to happen. They will get the force on Carter, though. So it's going to go three to six for the force play. And that's out number one. Strawberry, the new runner at first. Strategy roll. Nothing happening. Here is Mookie Wilson. Ryan, one, two. Strikeout chance. Got him. Mookie Wilson out on strikes for out number two. That's going to bring up Ray Knight. Pitching matchup in game three is Ron Darling and Bob Nepper from Shea Stadium. After an off day for travel. 4-3. I forgot to do the strategy roll. Let me redo that. Don't want to skip a strategy roll. Six. He's got a chance to run because Ryan's a plus three and he's a six. That's a nine. That's a five at fit. 14 plus one is a 15 plus one from Ashby is a 16. One to 16, they're going to send him. And he's out. Caught stealing Daryl Strawberry. Wow. Down three to nothing. You better make it. And he didn't. And boy, Davey Johnson is chewing him out a new one. And Ray Knight will have to lead off the next inning. Actually, not a bad play because you get to second base, you're in scoring position where a base hit can score. You can get on the board. Um, and the odds were in his favor. You just don't expect to roll a 20 like that. That's why the D20s are evil. And again, I'm sure RJL is somewhere mumbling, mumbling rigged. So Nolan Ryan will lead off the bottom of the second with a 3 nothing lead. 1-4 is a blank. We go to Ryan. 6-5. He's going to ground to short. One away. And we go back to the top of the order for Billy Hatcher. 4-5. And that is a blank to a lefty. I mean, to a righty, rather. Hatcher will swing. 2-1. He's going to ground to second. Backman is there. Two up and two down now for Billy Doran. As Ojeda trying to settle in from that rough first inning. 4-2 is the ballpark card going to the Astrodome for the first time tonight. We get a 1-2. It's a ground ball to short and an easy 1-2-3 inning for Ojeda. Score still 3 to nothing after 2. And now Ray Knight will lead things off for the Mets. He was at the plate when Strawberry got thrown out. Ryan tonight. 2 3 is a strikeout chance, and 9 will get him. He's an 8. The stadium adds one. So he will grab some bench. Will Mr. Ray Knight. And that'll bring up Rafael Santana, number 8 hitter. Made a nice play defensively in the first inning, but let's see what we can do with the bat. 6 6 is a walk chance. He will draw a, ball, a walk. One out walk to Santana. That does bring up Ojeda, and he's going to bunt. You know, it's not a good bunter. He's a three, becomes a two on the bunt. But first, we need to check for the pitcher to see if he strikes him out. So we go to Ryan. Five fives, a walk chance, but you cut the walks in half, so nothing, nothing going to happen there. So we go to our bunt chart for Ojeda, and he is a two bunter. And we need to roll 1d20 and 1d6. D6 will tell us who fields it. That is the first baseman. It's a 15. And as a 2 and a 15, that's going to be the lead runner. Lead runner is thrown out. Even if he stayed a 3, the lead runner would be thrown out. So lead runner is thrown out. Batter safe at first. 
So it's going to be a three to six fielder's choice as charging was Glenn Davis. He was there in time to throw to shortstop Dickie Thon for the force. Ojeda will be the new runner at first with two outs. And that now is going to send up Lenny Dykstra. No strategy roll because you can't steal and he has no pickoffs. Ryan, 2-2. Two, two. That's automatic out against Lenny Dykstra. And it will be a fly to center to end the inning. So that's going to do it for the Mets here in the top of the third. They get nothing. Three shutout innings from Nolan Ryan. And now Ojeda comes back out. We're facing Garner, Davis, and Bass. Heart of the order. Three, four, and five in the lineup for the Strohs. Phil Garner. Scrap iron. Two, five is a walk. And he will walk. So Scrap Iron Garner gets the leadoff walk. Strategy roll. 20. It's a chance for a balk is a 1 or a 2 through 5. They pick him off. That's a 13, so he gets back. Garner scrambles back to the bag. Avoids their Hernandez tag, and he gets to stay at first base. Here is Ojeda to Glenn Davis. 1-1 one, is a strikeout plus. Super strikeout. Got him. One down. It's going to bring up Kevin Bass. Strategy roll again. Nothing happening. Ojeda, 4-5. And that is a walk plus to a lefty, but he's a switch here batting right, so it's a blank. Go to Kevin Bass. 4-3. And against a lefty, that's a double to left field on that split play. It's a double to left. We know Garner at least gets third. Can he score on a double to left field? Double to left field. You lose one on your run rating, drops him to a two. But Mookie Wilson's arm is a plus one, so it brings it back to a three. So one to three, and Garner can score. He does. Garner scores. Thanks in part to the arm, or lack thereof, of Mookie Wilson. And the Astros now grab a 4 nothing lead on the double from Kevin Bass. And now the Met bullpen starting to loosen. Rich Anderson. Rick Anderson, the righty, is loosely in the pen. Strategy rolls are still on. Nothing happening. Ojeda to Cruz. 5-5 five is a walk chance. 11 will not do it. So Cruz will get the swing. 3-5. He's going to do a star 6, which is a fly to center. That is out number 2. Kevin Bass is a 4. But to get from 2nd to 3rd on fly to center, you lose 2, but drops him to a 2. And Dykstra is a zero. So one to two, he makes it to third base. He does not. He has to hold. So two down, and that brings up Allen Ashby. Again, the strategy. Whoops, wrong, wrong dice. Wrong die on that one. Strategy rolls a one. He could try to steal third, but really, what, what's the point? So they're going to call that off. Here's Ojeda. Two, one, hit by pitch. Not going to happen. So Ashby will swing instead. That's a 5-2 is a star 1, which is a ground ball to short, and the inning is over. So they get out of the jam without further damage. But the one run does come in, and it's 4 nothing Astros after 3. And they're just digging themselves a hole. Mets were down 4 nothing, I believe, in Game 1, if I'm not mistaken, and then came back, so... And that was after four innings, so they got even. They got an extra inning to catch up, but we'll see. Here's Nolan Ryan. You don't want to keep digging yourself a hole because eventually you're not going to be able to dig out. Backman, 4-2 is a possible error. 3-4, that's a ground ball back to Nolan Ryan. He's a 13. That is going to be an error. So Ryan boots the ball. Error. On Nolan Ryan, allows Backman to reach to start the fourth. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Ryan to Hernandez, three fours a range play. They are playing halfway, so the infield's going to lose one off their range if it goes to that. Four three, star three is a ground ball to first, so it is going to go to that. So the range of Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis is a four, but they're playing halfway. It makes him a range of three 
on this range check. It's a range of three. And he can't get it. It's going to get by him. Is it going to be a single or a double? Let's see. I think on a failed range play, you do that on the first base. Let me double check it and make sure. Failed range. Failed range play on a G3. Is a number three. All right, number three. That doesn't sound right though on this chart. Let's see here. Failed range play. Okay. It was a ground ball to first originally. So according to this, failed range play on a G3. Because it was a because I believe it was a star three which took it to a G3 all right so but that doesn't make any sense to have a number three here because that talks about it just doesn't make any sense at all I'm just gonna say he gets by him for a base hit on the failed range play, it's going to turn into an S3. So S3, let's check the run advancement. To get front, well actually if it, get, if it gets by him, it should go to right field. It should turn into an S9, I would think. Logically, you would think it would, because if it gets by him, it means it goes to the outfield. So S9... You get from verse 30, add two to Backman's run rate. He makes him a six. Kevin Bass in right field is a, let's see, his is a plus one. So, yeah, Backman makes third without the throw. And Hernandez will be at first. I'm not sure if it did it 100% correct. I, to me, logically, if it's a failed range play at first, it gets through. It not only turns to an S3, to me it turns to an S9 because that means it goes to the outfield. If we had kept it an S3, then Backman still would have gotten there because all you need is a two through six to get to third. So it pretty much works out the same. Either way you go, plus there were two outs, so runners were going to advance anyway. So check that. I think that was Backman was the leadoff man. My bad. I didn't move the little number thing here. So nobody out. Gary Carter, the batter. Nolan Ryan. No strategy roll needed for this at bat. 2-2 two, two is an automatic out. Let's see what kind of out it is. It is a 6, which is a fly to left. Is it a sacrifice fly? Carter's sacrifice fly rating is a 5. It is. Wally Backman will come in to score, and the Mets are on the board finally. First out of the inning, but they do score the run on the sacrifice fly from Gary Carter. Cuts the lead to 4-1. to four to one. And back come the Mets. Here's Strawberry. Ryan, 5-4. That's a walk plus. Super walk. Even though that's a 20, it doesn't matter. Super walk makes that a 24. Stadium only drops at 1 to a 23, so that fits. And Strawberry will walk. And here come the Mets now. A two on and only one out. And Mookie Wilson, the batter. 3-2. He's not tired, so there's no single. Mookie Wilson, 3-5. That is a single pass short. Single to short. To get from second to home, you need a three or better. Hernandez is only a two, so he has to hold. Bases are now loaded. Had there been two outs, he would have scored, but there's only one out. And the bases are full of Mets. Nolan Ryan trying to bear down. 2-3, and that's a strikeout chance, and he got him. So he strikes out Ray Knight, a huge strikeout for out number two, and it's up to Rafael Santana. And, boy, what they did last time in about the same situation is they went for offense, gave up some defense because they needed a hit, and they're going to do it again. They're going to pinch hit for Santana, and they're not going to mess around with anybody else. They're going to go to... Danny Heap, he was the man of the hour. He had a pinch hit home run in the game one, so why not have him up here again? So 
So Danny Heap, and then we're going to have Kevin Elster at the shortstop come into play because he's a good defensive shortstop. So they won't lose a whole lot. He's a four as a shortstop, so they won't lose a whole lot. But Danny Heap's in there to try to knock in a few runs if possible. Ryan, 4-2, possible error. 3-3 three, three is a single to first. That's an eight. Glenn Davis, his error rating is only a two. So there's not going to be an error, but it will be an S3. That will score the run. Hernandez will score on an S3. To score from second, you need a four or better. Strawberry has that, so it's a two-run single. And Mookie Wilson runs at a five, and with two outs makes him a six. He will make it to third. So Danny Heap, a big pinch hit, and the Mets have tied this ball game at three just that quickly. Just that quickly. I'm, I'm sorry, it's four to three. They cut the lead to four to three. My bad. They cut the lead to four to three just that quickly, and Danny Heap has done it again with his pinch hitting. Now do you pinch hit for Ojeda, and, but you still got to cover six innings, so I think you're going to leave Ojeda in there. You've, you've gotten back in the game now, so might as well just leave him in there. Strategy roll. Nothing happening. Ryan, 4-1. Would have been a home run chance versus a right-hander, but Ojeda's a lefty. So, blank. Here's Ojeda. 5-2 is a ground ball to second, and the inning's over. But the Mets come through big time with three runs here in the top of the fourth. Like we said, the game is never over in Inside pitch. Game is never over an inside pitch. Or almost, you know, virtually never over. I won't say it's never, never over, but it's it's pretty close to not being over. So now I need to get my card straight. When I use these base runners, it kind of messes up my little thing here. So I gotta get the guys in the right order. The last out was made by the pitcher, so Dykstra will lead off. Okay, now I think we're straight. So Nolan Ryan is set to bat second this inning, but I think you're going to leave him in there. You're not going to pinch hit for him just yet. you got to still got a 4-3 to three lead, so they want him to at least go five innings and see if he can get the win. Here's Dickie Thon now to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Against Ojeda, 4-2 is the ballpark card. We're going back to the Astrodome. Back to the Dome for the Dickie Thon at bat. 4-5 is a star one, which is the ground ball to short. So the new shortstop, Kevin Elster. When you come to the game brand new, the ball will find you, and it found him, but he was up to the task, one down. So let's make that move here. Elster is the new shortstop. So make sure that's in impacted and shown that Elster is the new shortstop. All right, here's Nolan Ryan. Ojeda, 3-3, three, three, strikeout, got him, two down. And that's going to send up Billy Hatcher, top of the order. 4-2, that's back to the ballpark card again, back to the Astrodome for Billy Hatcher. All we need now is a rare play, right? 6-2, no, we don't get it, we get a grounder to short. For Elster to handle once again, and the inning's over. So four innings are in the books. It is four to three. Mets have come back in this ball game. We got a ball game on our hands at four to three. So when it was four nothing, I had no doubts that the Mets would probably come back, and they did. Right back in the game, it's four to three, and top of the order, Lenny Dykstra against Nolan Ryan. Four four. That's an automatic out to a lefty. And it's going to be a fly to center. Hatcher puts it away, one down. And that takes us to Wally Backman. 2-3 is a strikeout chance. 13 is too high. We go to Backman's card to finish. 5-4 is a grounder right back to Nolan Ryan. Two outs very easily. And that brings up Keith Hernandez. 6-2, and that's a ball one on a wild pitch. 6-3 is a strikeout plus, and he got him. So, Or no, he didn't. Take it back. 
7 plus the 1 is an 8. The plus makes it an 18, but that's a 19. So Hernandez fends that off. He does not strike out. He foul tipped that one, so he's still at bat. Gets the swing. 2-4 is going to pop to short, so now the inning's over. But he didn't strike out. He popped to short to end the inning. Bottom of the fifth we go. Still 4-3. to three. Astrodome crowd a little bit on their seat on the edge of their seats thinking they had the game won, pretty much won after three innings, but can't short change the Mets. They didn't win 108 games for nothing. 5-2 is a possible error on a ground ball. 3-1 is the ground ball to second, but that's a 15, and Backman's error rating is only an 8. So no error. Play was made, 4-3 to three, on a tough hop. Even on the AstroTurf, must hit a seam, but he was up to the task. It's Phil Garner, 2-6, blank to a righty. Go to Garner, 2-4, he's going to ground to third. Ray Knight is there, two down. So Ojeda has kind of settled in since that first inning. Here's Glenn Davis, 4-3, it's another possible error. 6-1 is a pop to short. That's a 7. I don't think Elster is going to make the error on that. Actually, he will. He's a 9. That's a 7. It is an odd number, so it is going to be an error. He drops the pop-up. So now let's look at the failed error check on a pop to short. Failed error check on a pop to short. It's a number 2. One base of less than two outs, otherwise two bases. Okay, so it just says one base is all it says. So Glenn Davis will hold it first base. Strategy roll for Glenn Davis. It's a one. He could steal if he wants to. 15 plus the one. plus This is a one to 17 to steal it. Why not? And he's in there barely. Boy, Davey Johnson, not happy. Elster claiming he put the tag on, but... Or actually not Elster Backman. Claiming he swiped the tag just in time, but they're going to argue with the umpire to no avail. As Glenn Davis is safe at second base. He's in scoring position where basic can score him. Ojeda to Bass, 2-2. Two, two. Strikeout chance to a righty. That's a five. He got him. So Kevin Bass down on strikes, and Ojeda pitches around the stolen base. Nothing for the Astros in the fifth. We go to the sixth. It's still 4-3. to three. Nolan Ryan's still back out there. He can face 24 batters. Right now, he has faced 18, 19, 20, 21. This will be batter number 22. So he's going to get tired this inning by the time he gets to Mookie Wilson. So here's Ryan to Carter, 4-3. That's a strikeout plus, and he is out of there. The so plus makes that a 17, plus the one there makes an 18, so that 17 fits. And Gary Carter is out. Here's Daryl Strawberry. 2-4, another strikeout plus, and he got him. So back-to-back -back strikeouts. Ryan says, who's tired? Not me. Mookie Wilson. 5-2. Now, we, is he tired or not? That's the question. Mookie Wilson, we've got he went, gone through the lineup twice as 18. The third time, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This is batter 24. He is not tired. He gets tired on batter 25. So he is not tired. This strikeout chance gets the chance to stand, and it does. He struck him out. So he strikes out the side. Does Nolan Ryan. He is now tired if he comes back out. But he strikes out the side, and they may cap Ryan at the six innings. I don't know. I doubt you want to bring him out there when he's tired. Ojeda is back out. He can face 28 batters. means he can go through the lineup three times. It'll be Cruz. He's faced, uh, let's see, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Cruz will be batter number 24, so he's going to the verge of being tired as well. So it's going to be probably his last inning either way. Oh, hated to Cruz. 6-2. He's not tired, so there's no single there. Go to Cruz. 6-6 six, six is a single. There's a single there, though. Single pass second. And Cruz is aboard. And since Ryan's at bat or turn at bat is coming up shortly, they will pinch hit for Nolan Ryan. His day is done, but he will qualify for the win as long as the Astros don't relinquish the lead. And with a lefty on the mound, the bullpen for the, or the bench rather for the 
Astros have two right-handed hitters, Davey Lopes and Jim Pankovitz. And actually, Pankovitz is a little bit better hitter. So Pankovitz, especially against lefties, he will come in and pinch hit. So Pankovitz will be coming in to pinch hit for Ryan. But right now, it's Ashby against Cruz. Strategy roll, nothing happening. Ojeda, 6-2. He's not tired yet. We'll go to Ashby. 3-5. That's a single to left. Cruz will make it there. Let's see if he can make it all the way. He is a two to get from single to get from first to third on a single to left. You lose two, drops him to a zero, but Mookie Wilson is a one. So he will make third base on a one. He does not. He has to hold. So runners at first and second. Nobody out for Dickie Thon. Bullpen activity for the Mets. Anderson sat down a long time ago. Uh, Roger McDowell, who took the loss in game one, is gonna, they're going to try to get him back on the horse right away. He's in, in the bullpen loosening. Ojeda to Thon, 5-6, strikeout chance. 11 is too high to a lefty. Go to Thon. 2-4, fly to left. That's out number one. And Cruz has no chance to get to third. You lose three. It makes him a negative one plus one from Wilson is a zero, so we can't go anywhere. And now Jim Pankovitz, the pinch hitter, he hit 283 on the season. Much better against lefties. Now Ojeda can face 28. This is batter number 27. But he is set to bat third next inning. He's been pitching so well lately. I think they're going to keep him in there and try to get him through the inning. Nothing on the havoc. Ojeda to Pankovitz, 1-1, one, one, strikeout plus. He got him. So he strikes out Pankovitz for out number two. And that's going to send us to Billy Hatcher. So one more out to get. This is batter number 28, so he will be tired after this batter. This is probably his last batter either way because he will be tired after this. Strategy roll. Nothing happening. Ojeda to Hatcher, 4-6, possible error on a throw. 1-5 is a single to right field. So 15, though, is too high for an error rating, but it is a single to right. So this could score a run. Cruz is a 2. There are two outs, makes him a 3. Single to right to score, you add 1, makes him a 4. Strawberry's arm is a 0. So 1-4, to four, and he will score. He does. Cruz comes in to score. Ashby, not much a runner. He would be a two. With the two outs, he would be a two. And then single to right to get from first to third. You add two, makes him a four. So he will actually make it as well. The third base. On the base hit by Billy Hatcher. Astros extend the lead to five to three. Bill Doran, the batter. Ojeda is now tired, so he's going to have to come out. They can't get him through the inning. He will have to come out. And now what do you do? Actually, they're going to bring in Doug Sisk just to try to get this third out. And then they'll bring McDowell in to pitch the seventh. But they just want Sisk. He won't. Any of two-thirds in game one, I said he was unavailable. It's really unrealistic because with the off day tomorrow, they would have him available. So, Sisk is in. <clears throat> His main objective is just to get the one out. That's all they want is one out of him. He just wants to get him out of the inning, then he'll be done. Strategy roll. Three. Hatcher has a chance to steal. 15 minus two. Those are 13. Plus one is a 14. One to 14, they'll send him. And he makes it. So Billy Hatcher steals second base. And now, Sisk really has to settle in against Bill Dorn. Three ones, a blank. We go to Bill Dorn's card. Six two. He's going to double to left field. A two run double for Bill Dorn. And this is not working out the way the Mets had wanted. It's a two-run double. Three runs are in. It's seven to three Astros. And Doug Sis not able to get it done in this one. That'll bring up Phil Garner.
strategy rolls are now off. 3-6 strikeout chance, 17 too high. We go to Garner. 3-6, ground ball back to the pitcher, Sisk, to end the inning. But damage certainly done right there. The damage was certainly done. And we go to the top of the seventh with a score 7-3, to three. Astros. We will need a new pitcher for both teams in the seventh. So let's see who's coming in for the Astros. The Mets have Knight, Elster, and Ojeda scheduled, but Elster will not bat. They will use Kevin Mitchell. So it'll be Kevin Mitchell coming in to play short now instead of Elster because they need offense. So Mitchell will be the shortstop. And they're going to use Howard Johnson as a pinch hitter. So they got to use all their all their everything in their arsenal early on. So we're going to have two righties and a switch, which means for the Astros they will go to a righty out of the bullpen. And that righty will be Senor Smoke, Aurelio Lopez. Three and three, seven saves, a 3.46 ERA. He will be on. Try to hold a 7-3 lead here against Ray Knight. 6-5 is a walk chance. 11 will not walk him. He's an 11, but the stadium takes one away. So he will not draw the walk. He will swing. 3-5. He's going to fly to right. One away. So stadium cost him there. Cost him a walk. And here's Kevin Mitchell, who will pinch hit and stay in the game to play short. 2-5 is a strikeout. He got him. Might as well left Elster in there when you get that one on a strikeout, but they didn't know that. So here's Howard Johnson, the pinch hitter for the pitcher Sisk. 5-3 from Lopez is a wild pitch. Ball one, obviously. 1-1's one, a automatic out to a lefty, so we got him. And it's going to be a fly to left to end the inning. So Howard Johnson is done. Nothing for the Mets here in the top of the seventh and we got to figure out who the Mets are going to bring in for relief Glenn Davis is a righty coming up so we'll see righty switching left so it may not matter who they bring in have to figure all that out I guess so let's mull over their bullpen and see who they want to bring in looks like they may bring in right hander Let's see, where'd he go? With the score being what it is, I don't know if they want to bring McDowell in. They're going to bring in Rick Anderson instead. So Rick Anderson will pitch. He didn't pitch in game one, so he's certainly obviously fresh. So Rick Anderson it is. And it is the seventh inning stretch. So I'm going to stand up and take a stretch. for Take me out to the ball game. Seventh inning stretch is in the books. Glenn Davis will come out and face Rick Anderson to start the bottom of the seventh of a 7-3 seven to three game. 6-1, possible error on a throw. 2-5 is a star one, which is a fly to left, so no throw to worry about. One down for Kevin Bass. 4-5, that's the ballpark card going back to the Astrodome for the Kevin Bass at bat. 4-6 is a ground ball to third. Ray Knight is there, two down. 
brings up Jose Cruz. 3-5, and that's a strikeout chance. 19, way too high for that. Cruz, 4-1, ground ball to second, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Rick Anderson, so he did very well. They can have him complete the game, finish out the game, because he, he's got a long relief rating. Now, coming up for the Astros, I'm sorry, for the Mets, rather, in top of the eighth, it'll be top of the order, Dykstra, Backman, and Hernandez. Uh, do they want to use Calhoun is the question, a lefty. Lopez did pretty well for himself in that first inning of work, so they're going to leave him in there. There is an off day tomorrow, so he got he can rest, so not have to worry about going two innings and not being available. He can rest in the off day. So here's Senor Smoke again. 5-6 and gets a lefty. That's automatic out. It will be a grounder to short. So one away. And Wally Backman, the batter. 5-6. And again, same chance. It's another automatic out. It is a 6 this time. Fly to center. Two down. So Aurelio Lopez, Senor Smoke. Not flinching. Keith Hernandez, 1-4. That's a strikeout chance to a lefty, but 17 is too high. Go to Hernandez, 4-6 is a fly to center. And how about that? Senor Smoke pitches two shutout innings, and they'll cap him there. It won't be a safe situation, so they won't use Dave Smith, that's for sure. They'll use somebody else, maybe Larry Anderson or somebody. We'll see. Right now it's the bottom of the eighth, and Alan Ashby will come to bat, and they're actually going to pinch hit for Senor Smoke. So they're going to use Danny Dreesen off the bench as a pinch hitter with the Astros. He was a midseason acquisition from the Giants. So it'll be Ashby, Thon, and Dreesen do up against Anderson. 2-2, two -two, ball one. 2-5, strikeout chance, 14 too high. We go to Ashby. 5-5, five, five, question mark, 8 against a righty goes to 10, but that's a 13, so it's simply a fly to center. Dykstra runs it down, one down for Dickie Thon. 3-4, and that is a strikeout chance. 6 will get him, so 2 down. 2 down right there for Rick Anderson. Jesse Orozco is not pitched. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to bring in Orozco just so he gets in just so he gets into the action before the in the first two games. They at least don't want to come in cold in game 3 without any action. So they're going to bring in Orozco and with that move they will the Astros will may pull Dreesen. Let's see. No, actually you know what? They let Dreesen hit anyway cuz he's a generic card and it doesn't matter. So Orozco lefty on lefty to Danny Dreesen. 1-2 is a range play. Go to Dreesen's card. 1-3 is a fly to center. That's a range of Dykstra. He's a 4. And Dykstra makes the catch to end the inning. So they just wanted to get a Roscoe at least a, a, a hint of the NLCS so he wasn't coming in brand new in game 3. He's got, you know, like I said, off day to rest, so might as well get him some work. So we go to the ninth. It's seven to three. Astros, no save situation. So let's see who the Astros want to bring in to pitch. Could be Larry Anderson. Could be. Yeah, I guess it's going to be Larry Anderson. There's no no reason to bring in anybody else right now. I guess because Anderson did not pitch in game one. Neither is Darwin, but he's more of a long reliever. So Gary Carter. Leads off the top of the ninth, down 7-3. to three. It'll be Carter, Strawberry, and Wilson against Larry Anderson. 1-5 is a hit by pitch. No hit by pitch. Here's Gary Carter. 4-3 is a single past third base. And what did you expect? A 1-2-3 inning and an inside pitch? Probably not. 1-2-3 ninth innings and inside pitch are very rare. No strategy roll needed. Here's Daryl Strawberry. 1-5, another possible hit by pitch. Again, the minus 3 from Anderson takes that away. Strawberry will swing. 2-2, two, two. he's going to pop it to short. One down for Mookie Wilson. Lee Mazzilli is on deck. Swinging a bat, he would hit if he get down to the pitcher spot. 
Anderson, 3-6 is a blank. We go to Mookie Wilson. Whoop, that orange die didn't go through. Let's redo that. Mookie Wilson, 3-3 three, three against a right-hander. He doubles to left field, and they are playing safe. They're down by four runs. They're not gonna, we're not even going to worry about whether Carter can score. We're going to hold him up and put the brakes on. When there's no strategy roll, you play it safe. So whether that's a rule book or not, that's my rule book. I'm playing it safe. I'm not letting him get thrown out. That would be absolutely ridiculous to let him get thrown out like that. Double to left, you lose one, drop him down to one. It'd be a one-two chance, and it's not worth it. So his run doesn't really mean anything. So here's Ray Knight to the plate. Ray Knight. There is one out. As Strawberry made an out. So one out. Tying run is on deck, actually. So Dave Smith now has started to loosen just in case because Anderson's starting to falter. So they thought Dave Smith would get the game off, but maybe not. Actually, Calhoun and Smith both loosening double barrel action in the Astro bullpen. Still no strategy roll. Anderson, 4-5. Strikeout chance, 16, though. Too high. We go to Ray Knight. As I drop the dice. In the mayhem, I dropped the dice, so hold on, folks. Lost the momentum there for the Mets by dropping the dice, unfortunately. All right, so Ray Knight does get to swing. 5-5. Five, five. Star 5 is a ground ball to third, and they will surrender the run. Carter will come in. Mookie Wilson can only get to third on a 6, and he does, so Mookie Wilson will take third. Ray Knight grounds out. The run does score. It's now 7-4, to four, but there are now two outs. Two outs. And Kevin Mitchell, the batter, it is now technically a save situation. Technically a save situation, so they're going to go to the bullpen. They're not going to take any chances. They're going to... They were hoping to get the game off, but Dave Smith, even though he blew the save in game one, they want to get him back on the horse, get his confidence back. So he's back to come in and face Kevin Mitchell. Lee Mazzilli is on deck and would pinch hit for the pitcher, Orozco. But Mitchell has to get on first. Still no strategy rolls. Seven to four. Top of the ninth, two outs, runner on third. Smith, 6-3, range play to Kevin Mitchell. 2-4, that's a question mark 8, so we resolve this first, then the range play. Question mark 8, that's an 11. That would be a triple for Kevin Mitchell to center field, but it is a range play for Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher in center field is a 3. So a 1-3, to three and the game is over, 4-5 or 6, and Mitchell has just tripled. It's a four. It's a triple. Mookie Wilson will come in to score. Kevin Mitchell has tripled. The score is now seven to five. And Lee Mazzilli is up as a pinch hitter. He is the tying run. He represents the tying run against Dave Smith, who is having his issues again. Smith. Delivering to Mazzilli. 3-1. Switch hitter batting left is a blank. So we go to Mazzilli. 5-5. Five, five, fly to left and the ball game is finally over. Mets do get two in the ninth to make it interesting. But it is the Astros who take a two games to none lead in the series. Give the save to Dave Smith. Give the win to Nolan Ryan. He was the winner when the Score ended, and since the Mets never tied the game, Bobby Ojeda takes the loss. Dave Smith does get the save, but 7-5 to five your score. Astros take a two-games-to-none lead in the NLCS, but the NLCS best of seven will now head back to Shea Stadium for three games in a row. The Mets may find their home cooking in the outdoors, on the grass, instead of in the dome. It'll be Ron Darling for the Mets against Bob Nepper for the Astros in Game 3. So, hope you enjoyed that presentation of Inside Pitch 1986 NLCS. 
Until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.